guys, we're going to do a couple of things today and um, we've got a real good opportunity here to show you something. Um, I've got the carburetors off, they've been in the cleaner and they were in a much better state than I would have expected, which is great. Um, the, the condition of them generally also reflected the mileage shown on the bike, again that's great. Um, but what I did find was that the needle jets, the, sorry the needle valves, there's a little spring which I'll show you in a second. Uh, that sits on the needle valve and the float rests against that and the springs within that were weak so that would affect the fuel levels in a way I'm going to show you in a minute. So we're going to put some new needle valves in those carburetors, we'll set the fuel levels up, we'll pop them back on the bike and I bet it'll adjust up really nicely. Also you may have noticed me saying that I didn't like the way the spark plugs felt when I took them out and even worse when I was putting this one back in here. So what I need to do, uh, the thread has been slightly crossed at some point and I need to clean that thread up and put it in a position where uh, I can get a new spark plug in and it will sit nicely to the bottom of the thread. If you try and tap it with a, a normal thread cleaner, uh, the chances are that you'll either start tearing a new thread in and as you get down to the old thread, you're just going to get a mess of a new thread being cut going to the old thread and the chances are you're just going to pull all, all the threading out altogether. Or you can use one of these. And this is an expandable thread cleaner. It goes in right past the threads into the cylinder. You screw that out and this expands in a way I'll show you in a moment. And you can seat it in the threads and wind it back out. And it has the, also the advantage of you're bringing, you're cutting going outwards. So any swath or residue that you're generating by doing so, I'll put some oil on that. It'll stick to the, the cutter and it'll, it'll pull the swath out. If we'd done it cutting in, the swath would be falling into the cylinder, it's aluminium, it wouldn't be the end of the world, um, but it's far from desirable. Uh, it'd probably start up, you might get it, you know, start up, you might get a piece of aluminium stuck under a, a valve seat, it might not like that, you know, there's just, it's just all sorts of things you'd rather not be doing. So we'll use this and let's see if we can get that thread cleaned up and a spark plug spun in, and then we'll do the uh, carburetors, we'll put the new needle valves in, set the fuel levels up and I'll show you how you do that and uh, pop them back on the bike and uh, let's give it another go. You can perhaps see the top couple of threads there are a bit shinier than their friends and that's because they're kind of new, they've newly been or relatively newly been cut into the head by, uh, by the spark plug. So we're going to have a look and see how we can resolve that. Right guys, this is the reversible um, thread cleaner. And as you can see, that part there is expandable. And as I screw, as I screw that down, it draws that into the thread and expands it, as you can see like that. Until you get to the, until it's fully home like that. And then that will be, you know, nicely locked into the thread and I can wind it back out. So I'll undo that. I can pass that through the thread into the cylinder, bring it back up, rotate, rotate that gently until that sits firmly in the undamaged part of the thread, wind it out and it'll wind itself into the, uh, along the undamaged part of the thread, into the damaged part and clean that on the way out. And I'll put some oil on that so as the, um, the residue and swarf sticks to the cleaner. Okay, let's give it a whirl. Okay, I've got my, th my reversible thread cleaner here, so I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the thread, on the body of it, just so it'll catch any residue. And I'll pass now into the cylinder. And I don't want to tighten it too much because I don't want to. I'm going to make sure it'll rotate. And you can see that's actually quite firmly locked into the thread already. I don't want to overdo it. And let's just see if I can wind that out with a socket. Okay, that clean that came out and cleaned it. So now. I'll take it back in and make it tighter in the thread. Again, 
So we continue to clean that thread. Wind it back in again. So you're not doing too much at once. And I hope that should look like a thread when I've done. Some little bits of residue on there as you can see let's see now if we can get a spark plug in there i'm going quite carefully i don't overdo this at all and that still doesn't feel right Put that in and tighten that up considerably so as it really grips that thread. As I said, I don't want to overdo it, but Well, if that screws in as nicely as that, theoretically a spark plug should as well. Okay, I'm going to screw that back in because it's still not wanting to let a spark plug in properly. So I'm going to screw it in about two thirds of the way in and then I'm going to tighten that in really more than I would have wanted to. Not over tight, but just so that it's cutting a bit more vigorously than it was. So just I don't want to over tighten it into the thread. Right, I can feel that. No, do it a bit more because I want to feel that it's really cutting that thread. Right, let's wind that out now. And as we get towards the top, I am going to nip it up a bit more. Because it really cuts the thread. I can feel actually cutting there now. A bit more. Oops. Yeah, that doesn't want to go anymore, so I'm not going to force it. But let's just see if it's cut. How it's cutting that thread. Yeah, I can actually feel it. But it's still nice and solid. And you can see the residue stuck in the thread there. All right. And see how it looks. That looks like a thread, guys. Let's just see if I can get the spark plug in. socket on that. There we go. Well, 
My front plug is fitting nicely. And the bottom of that thread now, beautiful. So that's a bit of a, that was a, bit of a win. I've never done that before. Um, so every day is a school day, isn't it? So I've learned something today. That's a be a bit more aggressive than you were being before, but um, you can always get a bit more aggressive and a bit more. If you start getting off too aggressive, you can't be less aggressive once you've bollocksed it, can you? So, but I've won a coconut there, so it means the cylinder head doesn't need to come off, which is fantastic news, and we can push ahead now. So let's have a look at these carburetors, and we'll take it from there. Hey guys, this is our carburetors. Now they've been in the cleaner, and you can see that they look loads better. I sprayed them with some, um, you know, some light oil just to keep any corrosion off them and keep them lubricated, but they look loads cleaner until you go like that. In which case, they don't look so nice at all, do they? I've contributed a few more quid to the David Silver's Retirement Fund, and um, I've got a pair of these now. I'm going to pop these on the top when we're finished, and they'll look loads better. I will pop these off, you can have a look at the, the diaphragms inside there, you know, they really are in good condition. Problem being, that the needle valves are short, so I'm going to pop these off for you now. And we'll put some needle valves in. I'll just show you what I mean when I say uh, the needle valves are short. I've explained to you before how um, basically how carburetion works and the emulsion tubes which pass an emulsion of fuel and air up into the venturi which is that bit in there. Um, they sit in there and they sit in the float bowl in a certain depth of petrol or gasoline. If that level is too high, your mixture is going to be too rich. If it's too low, it's going to be too lean. Now you can adjust it, you know, at slow running by the slow running adjusting screw, which is, it lives in there, but I've got it out just now. Um, oh, excuse me, but you can quite see it should sit in, no, I can't get the light on it. Sorry guys, it should sit in there. I've got one in this one. You can probably see that one. You see that? Yeah, that's better. So it's there. Yeah, anyway. So if the depth is wrong, you can screw around the mixture screw all day. You're never going to get that carburetion right. Problem with this being that the needle valve sits in there. That is a needle valve there, where my finger is. And there's a tiny wee spring on top of that. And that spring. You see that? That spring has to have a certain tension on it. If the tension's not right, when you put the float in it like that, the float will actually, I'm gonna try and get it to show you, that tang that sits there, that tang rests on top of the needle valve. And it should just rest on it gently, and the needle, that little spring should support that float. If it doesn't do, the float will sag down, as this is going to do now. I'll put the float back on. It should just sit with the float just touching it. But when I rest that, you can you see that? It's just resting there now. But it's just not quite got enough tension in that spring to support it. So that would mean that as the, as the float came up under the, under the fuel, with the fuel under it, it would depress that um, needle valve and change the fuel level. So I need to put some new needle valves in. So let's do that right now. So we'll just pop the shaft out again. Take that wee screw out. It really is dead easy. And it, it's such a fundamental part of carburetion. And it's so often ignored, you know, people think you can just clean the carbon and stick them back on. Well, you can't, because if this isn't right, nothing else is ever going to be right. Get a wee pair of pliers. Not the correct pliers I'm looking for, but they'll suffice for now. Okay, so... That is the needle valve there. And it's that little part here that has sprung. 
So I'll get the new one out. As I say, a few quid more in Mr. Silver's retirement fund. Okay. Look going out. Yes, it is. Okay, so that pops in there. I am going to pop a tiny wee bit of grease on that just to ease it in for its first for its first time. It should pop in there. Sometimes you don't want to go in just straight away. Okay, that's actually sat in really nicely straight away. So I'm going to put that on. I can I can feel there's a, there's, there's more tension on that spring already. I'll put that back in there. Little screw on. Just hold it in place. To put the float in. And you, you can see that it's already bouncing away there nicely. So I get my caliper. And as I remember, I will check, but it's 22 mil the depth of that float. So we'll get our caliper and we measure the depth from that face, from that face there to the top of the float. That's going to be 22 mil. So let's see what we get. And with 25 there. Which would make it too lean. So I'm going to bend that tang up. I'll just bend that tang there, just gently. See, I think someone's been trying to adjust that when they are uh, against that spring that was crap. So th they were never going to get that right. That is now 22 and a bit. As you can see, I don't know if you can see there, you're looking at that mark there. So I'll just take a little bit more out of that. A little. Make sure that's just resting on the on the spring. And we have got exactly 22 mil. That'll be just that'll just be great now. So I'll do the same with the other one. Pop the float balls back on. Put these nice new shiny caps on. And uh, we'll be in business. Right, guys, that'll do, won't it? I'll speak to you in a few minutes. Bit of interest. You can see when I do its friend, that's even worse. It's actually just dropping straight into the bottom. You can hear the, the float just striking the bottom of the bowl because that spring at the top of the needle valve is just so short. So we'll change that now, and then uh, we'll have two carbs that, that will, that will um, meet the fuel correctly. And you can see when I've put the new, I'd put the needle valve in just a second ago, and you can see how springy that is, that just sitting nicely on that little spring. You can see that's supporting the float now. So I'll just set this fuel level up as I did the other one. Just out of interest, what have I got here? I've got 25 again, so it's still, this was adjusted the same way as its friend, i.e. wrongly. It was adjusted to take into account the, um, Marked spring on that. So just adjust that a little. What have we got? There we are. The little adjustment there gives me 22. I'll just check it again. That's just touching. That is just touching that face and the flat of the vernier is just resting. As you can, can you see that? I just make that so it just rests against the top of the, against the float there. Can you 
can you see that? I've got exactly 22 mil there. So that's perfect. And the wood of Alan Mill yard. Perfect. Okay, I'll put this back together now, put the carb tops on, and we'll be in business. Those are the, these are the diaphragms that sit on the top of the, the carburetor slide. And to check those, pull them up to the light, and there should be no tears or other damage on these. There's a little tang there which locates it on top of the carb body, and there's a little indentation in the body there, just to, where my finger is there, just to locate it. So you drop that in there, and it slides down into the main jet. But these are really, really nice diaphragms. They aren't always. And just run them around like that with your finger. Oop, make sure it sits in there sweetly. Now we can put new spring on. Sorry, the old spring on, and that nice new shiny carb top. Okay, we've got the carbs back on this little bike now, so let's have a look at them and just see how much nicer they look. There we are, they're much prettier, aren't they? And nice new tops on them. Carbs are nice and clean. I need to do something with that because that still looks a bit sad despite the fact it's been in the cleaner. I need to get something in there to clean all that kind of old rust off. But um, they're looking okay. Let's look at the other side. Just the same. Just a bit more uh, a bit more space to see there. So they look great. Um, so I'm going to get some fuel in it now. Let's just see if they'll fire up. And then as long as it fires up and runs something like right, we'll put the air cleaners back on and uh, let's, let's tune it. Okay, we're ready to go. Switch the fuel on, fill the carbs up. Just give it a minute to fill the carbs and let's see what it'll do for us. Won't we'll it run something like we'll pop the air cleaners on and things, but let's give it a go. Still a very cold little engine that's just started up. So now I'm going to pop the air cleaners on and then we'll set up the um, the carbs for sinking and we can run it up and tune it. Two minutes. Right, I've got the air cleaners back on. I've had a little tune at this engine and it starts and runs really quite nicely. days ago that really is a great result. Um, what I'm going to do now I'm going to change these shocks because they're pretty horrible. I'm going to pop the back wheel out and clean up the hub and I don't know if I can do anything with the back wheel or not but um, I want to do something with the paint but we'll go through that next time I see you. I've been doing this for a number of years just now and I keep getting more and more and more bikes and I've got to the stage where I've got a delivery coming in about four to six weeks and I've just got too many bikes and I can't possibly do them on my own. So uh, I'll probably sell one or two projects um, come the time. So if you're interested in getting a project off me, give it a shout. There's a list at the start of the vid that tells you kind of what I'm doing today and why I'm doing it. And there's a list there of the bikes that are coming in. There's 19 in total, so I can't possibly do 19 bikes. So uh, have a look. If there's anything you're interested in, give me a shout. So see you next time, guys, and thanks for watching.